What's up guys, the HSBC BWF World Tour Badminton Finals just finished and this tournament wraps up the three consecutive tournaments in Thailand for January. This was an excellent event with some great games. In this video I'll be analysing the semi-finals and final games for all of the badminton categories. The way the tournament worked was that eight players or pairs were put into two separate groups, Group A and Group B. They then all play against each other and the top two from each group would go through to the semi-finals. I think I prefer this group format rather than the previous tournaments which are all knockout because it means if you lose one game you can still get through your group. Here you can see the semi-finals which were played on the 30th of January. Starting from the top we have two women's doubles games. Here we saw both of the Korean pairs, Lee and Shin as well as Kim and Kong advance to the finals. Lee and Shin looked really good in their game against Chow and Lee. Their overall game was much more consistent and also they won a lot more points from their attack. The Koreans women's doubles team is really strong and I think having so many top women's doubles pairs helps the pairs play even better. They can compete against each other every day in training at that very high level unlike a lot of other nations. Kim and Kong got revenge over the Thailand pair who actually knocked them out of the Thailand Open earlier in January. Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiwan vs Choi Su Gyu and Si Sung Jae was another really interesting game which I was looking forward to watching. This was also a rematch from the group stages where the Koreans won in two sets. However in the semi-finals the Indonesian pair were able to get the win. I think that the first game where they were able to win 23-21 had a huge impact on how the semi-final would go. When the games get close like that I would always favour the Indonesian pair to pull through and win more times than they lose. They have so much experience at the highest level and I think this really showed in this game. One thing which I believe they learnt from playing them before in the tournament was that the Koreans defend really deep in the court. This meant Asan and Setiawan could play more block shots to the net which would force the Korean pair forward and often mean they were really out of position when playing the shot. Mohamed Asan especially has been playing really well and he is such a smart player to watch. He knows exactly when to move forward to attack the shuttle and really put pressure on his opponents. His attack is really effective. Another thing the Indonesians do so well is that they win a lot of points from the first three or four shots in the rally. This is one of their biggest advantages over a lot of pairs and it sets them up so well to win lots of quick points. In the women's singles semi-final between Tai Su Ying and An Si Young, this game went the way of the Chinese Taipei player. An Si Young is looking really good especially the fact that she is only 18 years of age which is incredible. She is 9th in the world rankings at such a young age. I think she would take a lot of positives away from these tournaments and approve a lot in the next few years. She even beat Carolina Marin in the group stage which is an amazing win. I think that really close game against Carolina Marin really took it out of her and in the second game Tai Su Ying really pulled away and won the match. Up next we saw the very successful English pair Ben Lane and Sean Vendy against currently the best men's doubles pair coming into the event Wang Ji Lin and Li Yang. I've been incredibly impressed with Ben and Sean in Thailand, they have beaten a lot of really high level doubles pairs. You can see that they are playing a lot more patient and consistent badminton and they have great movement around each other to try and keep on the attack. I really like how motivated they look and how confident they are. Even against Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin they played really well and were unlucky not to win the first set. After losing the first set it was always going to be hard for them to come back and Li Yang who wasn't playing that well in the first game stepped it up in the second match to win the game. I don't think the Chinese Taipei pair played their best badminton but they won in two straight games which is what matters. Carolina Marin had quite a comfortable win over an opponent she has beaten already in Thailand, Pompoe Chachuang, 21-13 and 21-13. Carolina Marin is showing her amazing consistency and skill throughout January and she showed that she is a level above her opponent in this semi-final win. Anders Antonsen had an amazing match versus Wang Su Wei which was back and forth with some incredible dives and returns in the match. I think this game really pushed Antonsen to his physical and mental limit and required him to really show how determined he is to win. In the mixed doubles Puavana Rucro and Teratonacci beat the French pair Jekyll and Delroux. However the game wasn't as easy as you think. The French pair are actually looking like a top mixed doubles pair. You definitely want to look out for them in the future, they are still really young too. The Thailand pet are just that good though, they are so fast around the court. Chao Tian Chen is someone who can't seem to get a win over Victor Axelsson. Victor Axelsson seems to know exactly how to play against him. 
I mean, Victor Axelsen is looking like the best in the world at the moment by quite a way, so even if Chao Tian Chen plays his best, it might not still be enough to beat Victor. The last semi final was Si Sung Jae and Che Yu Zhang against Go and Lei from Malaysia in the mixed doubles. The first set was actually really competitive between the two pairs and ended 21 19. However, in the second game, Sia and Che showed why they are the favourites and adapted well to beat the Malaysians. In the finals, the first game was the two Korean pairs against each other. This game was probably one of the best games in the tournament. Both pairs were shouting almost after every rally they won. It looked like Kim and Kong were going to win the match in two sets when they won the first game 21-15 and were 20-17 up in the second. However, Lee and Shin came back from six match points, including when it went to setting, to win 26-24. It all came down to some individual unforced errors where Kim and Kong put some shots into the net and some lifts out the back, which punished them. I think losing that game after almost winning the whole tournament really played in their mind for the third game. It's so difficult to just forget about it. On the contrast, Lee and Shin had nothing to lose in the third game, after they probably should have already lost. I think this confidence really helped them. You can see here in the last point, Shin played a drive shot and then ran forward to the net to play a block shot back, which was the winning shot. This is the play you do when you're full of confidence. This matchup is always very exciting to see, and we definitely saw that in the final here. Up next, we had the men's doubles final. Li Yang and Wang Chi Lim played against the daddies from Indonesia. Before the game started, I did think that the Chinese Taipei pair were always favourite to win the game. When I watch Setiawan and Assam play, they can have spells where their attack looks really strong and they are outplaying their opponents. However, they have times where they look inconsistent and give away some easy points, especially on the defence. I think Hendra Setiawan tends to do this more than Assam. You have to remember he is 36 years old now. In this final, we saw some amazing rallies and Li Yang definitely stepped up his game from the previous day in the semi-finals. You can see at the end how much it meant to them to win. I think they wanted to win more than the Indonesian pair, which is, can make all the difference. When the rallies start to get longer, it tends to favour the Chinese Taipei pair more because they are faster around the court and I believe they are more consistent and their attack is stronger. However, the Indonesians are more effective in the service situation. The second game was incredibly close and I would have loved it for it to go to the third game. Overall, the game ended 21-17 and 23-21. In the women's singles final, we saw another rematch between Tai Su Ying and Carolina Marin. Once again, another really close game, especially that third set. You could see how much both pairs wanted it, but Tai Su Ying was desperate for revenge after losing twice previously to her. What a game that was though and it showed how good Tai Su Ying is to keep calm and come back to win the third set from behind. There was nothing really between the two of them and it could have went either way. Both players played a really good game. These two players are definitely the best women's singles players right now. The match ended 21-14, 21-8 and then 21-19 to Tai Su Ying. In the men's singles final, we saw a match between Victor Axelsson and Anders Antonsen. Honestly, I thought Victor Axelsson would win this game rather comfortably. Anders Andersson hasn't been playing that well the whole time in Thailand and looked like he was exhausted after the semi-final match the day before. I thought this would really impact his performance in the final, especially since Axelsson has won his last match in two sets and has been playing amazingly well. However, in the match, Victor Axelsson didn't seem to play like his normal self. He was making a lot of unforced errors, for example lifts out of the back or blocks out of the side of the court. I think that the pressure was definitely on Victor Axelsson to win this match. Both players are from Denmark and they know each other really well. But because Victor Axelsson is the favourite to win, he was expected to win this match. This definitely showed in the deciding game where he looked really frustrated in himself. He was once again making a lot of errors and leaving shots which were going in. Anders Andersson did a great job at playing a consistent game though and he did a great job at attacking Axelsson's serve. Also when Anders Antonsen plays a smash, he is so fast at then following it up and attacking the block return from his opponent. Another thing Anders Antonsen did a lot was lift and push the shuttle to Victor Axelsen's forehand, which was effective at stopping Victor Axelsen from using his amazing round the head shots that he has. The game ended 21-16, 21-5 and then 21-17 to Anders Antonsen. Lastly, the mixed doubles final, and this game consisted of Si Sung Jae and Che Yu Zhang, as well as Puova Narukro and Taratanachi. The Thailand pair are just so dominant in mixed doubles, it's amazing to watch them. When they get into a rhythm, they are so hard to stop and win points from. 
In the second game, we saw that they lost that rhythm, and the Korean pair were able to beat them to 8 points. Si Sung Jae played some great variation shots from the back of the court to be unpredictable. However, in the third game, the Thailand pair showed why they are the best right now. Puavanaruko is incredibly quick around the court. It's insane how fast he is. This helps him so much because he can cover the whole court and also play attacking shots when other players might not be able to get there. A great example of this is when he takes the around the head shot. He gets to the shot so fast to play the smash and is then ready for the return right after hitting it. Teratanachai also has great awareness and knowledge of the game. This means she can anticipate her opponent's return to intercept shots at the front and win the rally. The game ended 21-18, 21-8 and 21-8 to the Thailand pair. That's my breakdown and analysis of the results of the BWF World Tour Finals. I will likely do some more in-depth analysis of some of the individual games later. Please subscribe to the channel to see more badminton content. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day.